All right, as you can see, it sort of, sort of does flame there. It's carbonizing. We got a little bit of flame and it's out. Self-extinguishing. All right, guys, today we're talking about Thermax PPSU from 3D XTAC. Now, PPSU or polyphenol sulfone is known by its industry names as Radel or sometimes PPSF. And it's an aromatic sulfone polymer that's great for high temperature applications. It's got insane thermal properties in combination with high impact strength, low smoke, and really good just overall strength making it a great solution for many engineering applications. It's actually got one of the highest temperature resistances of any unfilled FDM material with a glass transition temperature of 231 Celsius. So here's the box and when you order it from visionminer.com, this is what you get and you get the spool in here. Now these super high temp performance plastics actually come in a metalized vacuum sealed bag. So when you get it, it'll be like this. Now, even if it's unsealed, don't worry about it. You do have to dry it even fresh out of the bag before you print it. But we'll talk about that more in just a second. By the way, why do you want to buy from us? Simple, you get 3% back on every dollar you spend. That can be used towards nozzles, spools, glue, machines, accessories, more filament, anything you want. Plus, we're always on the phone to help you when you need it when you bought it from our store. So definitely check that out. We've got everything from machines to nozzles to filament and everything you need for high temp 3D printing. So let's talk about where you're going to see this material in industries. Okay, so thanks to being autoclavable and sterilizable by gamma radiation, we see this material a lot in the medical industry, from medical trays to surgical instruments to tool handles, anesthesiology equipment. Uh, we've even seen this material placed in cryo chambers due to its excellent low temperature performance, low temperature being like negative hundreds of degrees Celsius. It's also highly resistant to gamma radiation, even in large doses, up to 10 MRD. And it's often seen in hot water applications, plumbing, used as uh, replacements for metals or brass in boiling water, or even high pressure applications. In food service, it's seen a lot, uh, mostly thanks to being BPA free and biologically inert, which is safe for food contact. The high chemical resistance of materials like PPSU means that they can operate even when submerged in severe chemical environments, where many metals will actually end up dissolving. So what kind of machine do you need to print this filament? Firstly, your nozzle is going to have to go to at least 390 Celsius, preferably up to 410 or more. The bed on your machine is going to need to go to at least 130, but we usually print around 160 or higher if the machine is capable of that. As far as adhesives on the build plate, our nanopolymer adhesive works great for this material. It's one of the original materials we actually designed the stuff for, so as long as you got that, you don't even need to use brims. As far as chamber temperatures go, you do want to have a heated chamber. 90 Celsius or more, the more the better. Uh, this stuff loves to warp, so the closer you can get to the glass transition point of the material, the better results you're going to have. Now you can get great results in 90 Celsius or above. We've done a lot of crazy projects, but as new machines come out, it is something you'll want to consider. Now as for drying the filament, yes, like almost every other plastic, you gotta thoroughly dry this stuff before you process it, which is the fancy word for melting. By the way, if this video is helpful to you, please hit that like button. It tells the algorithm that our content is valuable and that you want more of it. And you might as well subscribe while you're down there uh, as we've got a lot more of these videos and breakdowns on filaments coming on the way. Now, if you really wanna get into drying your filament, that last topic, then uh, we do have an entire kit available on our site at visionminer.com slash dry kit. And they've got vacuum chambers and ovens from our shop to yours. We're here to make this whole process easy for you. And that's why we also made metal spools, as you can see here. Uh, sometimes this stuff will come on plastic spools. And if you want to dry it at really high temperatures really quickly, then you don't have to worry about your spool warping or melting when you're drying it fast. Okay, so let's talk about some of the basic material specs. We've got a heat deflection temperature of 190 Celsius. That's the continuous use. You can use it up to that without worrying about it. The glass transition is about 230 Celsius with a melting point around 343 to 388. It is an amorphous thermoplastic, meaning there is no semicrystalline structure that comes into play as it cools, and it can be annealed to great effect to get more strength out of your parts. As far as basic strength specifications go, uh, for tensile strength, you get around 55 MPA on the ISO 520 standard. 
uh, and a tensile modulus of around 2310 megapascals. Uh, but do keep in mind the way your parts design the orientation at which it's printed will have a dramatic effect on the strength and you'll generally lose a little bit in the z-axis depending how it's printed. All the data sheets are available on our online store at visionminer.com slash data so you can find all the tensile modulus, elongation, impact strength, and all that good jazz on our website. Okay, let's talk about some specific environmental factors. As far as UV resistance goes, it's good, but long-term exposure of PPSU to direct sunlight will significantly decrease its ductility, meaning it becomes more brittle and it'll lose some of that tensile elongation and impact strength. It will also change color slightly over time. However, UV radiation doesn't affect the mechanical properties like the tensile strength or Young's modulus. As far as sterilization goes, it's awesome for the whole gamut from ETO gas, radiation, steam autoclaving, uh, plasma, dry heat, cold sterilization. It can handle all of it and that's a big reason we see it in medical all the time. As far as chemical resistance goes, it's great for the most common automotive fluids including gasoline, antifreeze, transmission fluid, uh, motor oil, power steering fluid, windshield washer fluid, you, you get the idea. As far as electrical properties grow, it is a strong insulator with a dielectric constant of 3.21 and a dissipation factor of 0 0.00926. Okay, so next let's go a little bit into certifications, biocompatibility, and a little more on sterilization. PPSU is totally autoclavable, it's radio translucent, it's flame retardant and detergent resistant, all while being biocompatible with FDA, USDA, and USP Class 6 compliance. It's great for food contact, being FDA and NSF compliant under standards 51 and 61, and it's also FAA regulation compliant for low smoke, continuous exposure to moisture, and impact. Parts made from the material can actually withstand over 1,000 autoclave cycles without any significant loss in mechanical properties, once again making it awesome for medical devices and tools. Okay, so we've got a variety of parts just so you can see the fit and finish of the actual material. This stuff comes out relatively translucent. You can sort of figure, see my finger through there. It does have a bit of a yellow hue to it, um, and it's pretty, pretty darn strong. Um, we've got some really cool parts here. I mean, it's just, it's beautiful, the surface finish you can get out of this stuff. And obviously we've got the obligatory benchy, as you can see. Overhangs aren't the best, but they still do pretty good considering. A lot better than material like Peak or something like that. So supports are not totally necessary. Uh, we do have high temp supports available on the site. Uh, for this material, but a lot of the time it's amazing what you can get away with with a single extruder. Now we've also got these parts which are electronics enclosures and if you look really closely you can see the warping actually happening over here. Now we did use a little bit of support. These are printed at 0.2 millimeters with a 0.4 nozzle, 0.2 millimeter layer height and one layer of separation for the support. And you can see the, the bottom surface is actually pretty good. Sometimes it's nasty, sometimes it's perfect. This one's sort of in between. So you can do a lot using supports. This is an electronics enclosure, very, very cool stuff. Uh, we've got a little tube here. You can really see that, that tone, that hue of it. It's a little bit more, uh, it's less brittle than PSU. Um, so you can sort of squeeze it more. So if you take a look at this here, I can actually push in on it with my thumb and you can get some good flex out of it. And we've got pretty good layer adhesion on this part as nothing's cracking or breaking. This is, uh, these vases were actually printed with a 0.6 millimeter extrusion width on a 0.4 nozzle. So we just got a little bit more surface area. Um, and uh, we're gonna burn this here in a second. <laughs> but before I do that, we're gonna break it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shove both thumbs in here as hard as I can. We're gonna watch how it breaks. Does it break down the layer lines? Does it shatter? Does it explode? Or does it just go in? I don't know, I haven't done this yet. It's a beautiful face, hate to do this, but let's go for it. Here we go. Woo, baby, look at that. So it literally just sheared off right off the top and you can see in the layers are the weak point. Like say, depending how you print your part, it's gonna be weakest in the Z axis. So, Interesting, very good. And if I break it, break it even more, it's, it's doing pretty good down there, but right there in the middle. Now it had really, really good adhesion all the way around. As you can see, like some of the other materials, we didn't get a chunk, 
broken out. It actually broke around the whole thing. So the weakest point was the layer adhesion. And uh, we got the top over here as well. And take this and just, let's just shatter it. So there you can see we got a good break all the way down the layer lines. Now that is an indicator of very good layer adhesion, probably due to the angle at this area of the part. And um, there's different ways you can print it. Like say, guys, this is the Wild West. You crank your temperatures, lower your speed, raise your speed, crank the temperatures, play around, and for each geometry, it's gonna be a little bit different. So, oh, yeah, cool, got a little, I don't know, it's a ping pong ball holder or something. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, so we're actually gonna burn this. Now, before I do, uh, I'm gonna pull out the Bofa fume extractor, which is available on our website. This is the Print Pro 2, but it's really great because it's got this entire flex arm and so I can just position this over my work area and it's gonna soak up all the fumes from burning this thermoplastic so all right I'm gonna hold it for 10 seconds we're gonna see if it lights on fire see if it drips see if it stays on fire and see how much it smokes let's uh, get right into it four five six seven eight nine ten okay did not catch fire. Did melt and go soft pretty fast under direct flame. Looks like I can kind of bend it out there. I don't want to touch the molten part because that'll just stick to my fingers and that would not be good. Um, cool. All right, let me try another angle. See if we can get it to actually light on fire. All right, as you can see, it sort of, sort of does flame there. It's carbonizing we got a little bit of flame and it's out self extinguishing very very good if you're going to be around flames or anything like that all right and it kind of drooped down there you can see we got some carbonization starting to flake off after what 10 to 15 seconds in the flame we'll do one more just for a uh, good measure all right and that's oh, so great having this fume extractor was the studio would be totally fumigated right now. Very cool. All right, not bad, not bad. Okay, let's move on to the next test. Now, if you're interested in this material, we do have sample bars like this. So if you need to put it in your chemical or you know your environment and actually test it out, um, we do have these samples available. So give us a call, we'll work with you. We'll send you a few of these and you can run your tests to your every whim. <laughs> but for now, I'm just going to break this thing. So I'm going to stick it here in this vise. We're going to see how much pressure it takes and really to see how it breaks. We're going to see if it explodes. Is it, is it going to bend? What exactly is going to happen? So let's just, let's go for it. Here we go. All right. Ooh, that's a good one. It did not explode. It did not break. It actually, um, bent a lot. That's that high impact strength for you there. So if you watch that Ultim 1010 video that we did, you'll actually notice that this exploded and we couldn't even find the other half. Ultim 9085 had a similar behavior where it actually bent and stretched itself. And you can see there we had great layer adhesion as it did not break like on the layer lines. Specifically, it actually broke throughout the entire material. So that was, uh, that was pretty good. So again, we've got this available on our website at visionminer.com slash materials, along with a whole gamut of other high performance thermoplastics, specifically for 3D printing. We also got the machines, the tools, and the accessories to make it easy for you. And if you don't want to do it yourself, we've got a print service. And as mentioned, we've got a bunch of other videos on all these materials that we sell, comparing with very similar parts or even the same parts. And uh, you can get a really good cross comparison to find the right material for your application. And if you're not sure, give us a call or check out the website. We're here to help. Thanks for watching. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next video.